Quickly, I just wanted to explain why I haven't been posting that frequently. I took a break and that's because I've been having a hard time sleeping. Like every single night I've been up till five in the morning or generally just about sleeping four hours and I'd be waking up in the middle of the night, I'm not able to go back to sleep and it's just become a big problem. So I was sleeping in, I was sleeping in like later times and it was ruining my whole entire sleeping schedule until the point where I really just couldn't fall asleep for a few other days. So then after that, after I had major issues within the last few days, I'm like enough is enough. Yesterday I invested a lot of money into sleepy time tea. I got like three boxes for a few months. I'm like, I'm having this every single night. Because I've actually had a sleeping problem ever since I've been like, I would say like middle school, high school, around the end of middle school, ever since and it's been really hard for me to fall asleep. It's just when I started growing up and that's how it's been ever since. I feel like with the tea after just one cup, I am out, I'm ready to go to sleep after about 30 minutes. And I feel like I've been sleeping like a baby every single night since I've been having the tea. When you're constantly getting no sleep, the body dramatically weakens. Therefore, healthy sleep every night, it should be non-negotiable. I don't prefer taking medication to resolve my sleeping issues, so I'm very happy that I was able to do that naturally. Moving forward, I wanted to discuss an interesting topic revolving around the powers of darkness. Let's start out with emotional darkness. What does it mean? Sometimes we feel like we are completely left in the dark, and usually this is brought from the motion of fear. When you are in fear, it's typically when you view someone or something as dangerous. For some reason, you have an instinct, and that's overthinking, possibly. You're overthinking the situation, maybe too much on specific details, how that is going to play out exactly. And not having control over that, you're just a little bit worked up about it. So then there's the real deal also, and that's all kinds of different fears and phobias that people have. For example, with that kind of fear, that's true fear, mainly brought from stuff like sharks or heights, actual things in life that are very terrifying. In the form of overthinking, though, you start to invent monster figures inside of your brain. I would say they're very like monsters because they, they're not real. No monster is real. We all know this. So you have this thing that's in your mind, you're scared of it, and you don't want to confront it for some reason, but the only way that you can get rid of it is by facing it. That's when you start to slay the monsters that you've invented inside of your brain. They'll start to leave and the fear will just completely go away. Next, I would say figure out what exactly you are afraid of and then grow a backbone because if you develop confidence then you're able to starve your fear. Confidence really is the key to the majority of situations in life, and if you can develop that early, it's going to get you far. I think that that is a good thing to have. You don't want to be too full of yourself ever, but I mean, some self-love, have that. Know every single day that you're able to move forward, and that'll make you prosper in life. Finding your inner darkness can also be a major factor with dealing with the powers of darkness. So if you're able to twist that around, use all those capabilities for good, or I would say actually more of like a defense mechanism, that's what you're going to want to do. How does a porcupine attack? Well, in their natural habitat, they start lifting up their quills when sensed of danger. So if they have a predator and they come close to the animal, what are they going to do? They're not just going to sit there and be like, oh, that's fine. No, they use their clothes as their first line of defense. They use their coat to scare predators away. There's actually a lot of animals out in the wild. You'd be surprised by the number of them that use their own body, their own fur coats to defend themselves in the wild. Human beings have identical natural urges to self-defend, minus the prickly coat. So if you get rid of that and all the coils and stuff like that, it's pretty much similar. It really is. People, the way that they do that would either be vocally or physically. I really appreciate you having to listen about what I had to say about this topic on darkness, on facing your fears, all kinds of different stuff really. But the thing is, have that confidence and move forward in your life. Do better every single day. Be healthy, get sleep. Well, it looks like it comes to the end of this video, so I'm going to have another one coming very shortly, and I'll see you next time.